Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is about uh, taking the new blended box map map that exists inside of Max 2017 Extension 1 and using it to do a blended cube projection. And uh, first, if you have not seen the uh, other video I just did, uh, please go take a look at it on my YouTube channel. It should be called Blended Box Map 2, and it talks about uh, the um, initial details about how to use the Blended Box Map map in 2017 as a blended box map. But one of the cool things about it is that as well as doing a blended box map, it also uh, allows you to do blended cube projections. So uh, the first thing, of course, is what are the differences between the two? So the basic difference is that a blended box map used as a blended box map is for applying a general noisy sort of material onto a surface. And generally you only need uh, one projection, you're projecting the same map on all the different sides, and uh, it's a general pattern. Whereas uh, a, a blended cube projection is very similar, you're still going to be projecting um, maps onto a surface, but these are for specific details and will usually involve um, all six maps instead of either one or three. So let's get to the practical example which I have set up here. So this is my robot and uh, again in the last video you saw I took this robot and I applied some general dirt to the surface. But when I did that I didn't really mind where the dirt was. So if there happened to be a scratch here or a little tiny uh, you know splotch of dirt there it doesn't really matter if it's there or if it's there or if it's there. It's a general pattern. I'm trying to make it look generally dirty. But now let's say I want to add very specific details on here, like uh, drips are a great example. Usually drips don't just appear anywhere on a surface. A drip will come from one spot uh, and then move down the surface. Like for example, a drip would start somewhere underneath this eye area and drip down here. Or maybe the sort of shoulder mount, the drip would start here and then go down here. Now, uh, to do that, you can't use the regular blended box map technique because it kind of, again, just puts stuff randomly on a surface. You want to put it very specifically in specific spots on the surface. And that's where you'd use a blended cube projection. So, um, using the uh, new blended box map, uh, if you, uh, instead of using one or three, if you set it to six, uh, you will now be in a mode to actually do one of these uh, blended cube projections and as well as changing it to six because you're going to be um, applying a map to all six sides uh, and it'll be a different map for each six sides you now want to actually render out some uh, templates so I'll show you how to go about doing that so step one is you grab your object and instead of applying it uh, your projection to individual objects you'll apply it to multiple objects at once and this gives you a few new options and what you want to do is you want to set it to cube and then you want to say create projection box and use selected nodes because you have your nodes selected here and now if we go out here and look what it's done is it's created this dummy object and the dummy object is square because you chose um, cube mode and the dummy object is in uh, 3D space um, t totally enveloping your object and that's where it's going to be projecting from so it'll be projecting uh, from sort of a camera view here and one from here and one from here that follows this dummy so and the difference between the individual mode and multiple objects at once is this will apply one projection to this entire surface from this uh, um, direction Whereas with the individual objects, each object would have its own projection, which is uh, completely separate from each other. So this is a way of combining the projection into one. So now once you've done this, uh, the next step is you want to render out templates. And the idea is you're going to take these templates and pull them into Photoshop and then paint on top of them. But you can't just paint a Photoshop without having a template because you won't know exactly where you're painting. So um, step one is choosing where you want to write the templates out to and I will write them out to this directory here and I will just name them something uh, I'll just do temporary uh, right now so um, I'm gonna save them as PNGs um, I'll just save them with the alpha channel and then the other thing is is when it renders these templates it'll use whatever lighting you have in the scene or um, if you don't have any lighting then it won't use uh, it'll use the default lighting so in this case, I'm just going to use the uh, default lighting as opposed to having lights in the scene. And then I choose a resolution, whatever resolution you want for your templates, and you hit render. And then it goes through and it renders out uh, the six different sides like this. Now once that's done, let's move over to Photoshop. 
Okay, now here we are inside of Photoshop, and you can see I loaded in the six different bitmaps that it wrote out into the templates directory, and they're labeled uh, top, right, left, front, bottom, and back. And these are just basically renders from that um, bounding box uh, that was created, that, uh, that dummy object of what uh, the projection is going to look like. And now what uh, I want to do is I want to start painting some dirt. So I already went ahead, and uh, you can see on this one I have two layers here, and I'll just turn these on. And what these layers are is me uh, using various uh, Photoshop brushes just to paint a little dirt on the surface. But in this case, as opposed to sort of the random dirt, like this stuff is kind of random here, but you can see there's some specific dirt here, like uh, these uh, drips. So there's a couple little spots around this edge, and then there's drips coming out from there, and drips over here on the other one, and drips coming from up here. And so now what I want to do is I want to take these drips and I want to use these uh, to do my dirt inside of Max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all collapse these layers into one. I'm going to do a new layer underneath here and I'm just going to uh, fill this with the color black. And then this I'm going to lock the transparency on and then fill it in with white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, and much like uh, the last time where I have a map where the white reveals a dirt material and the uh, black reveals a, um, a metal material, I'm now going to use this map uh, inside of 3ds Max to do exactly the same thing. Okay, we're back inside of Max, and you can see here now I have that map that I painted inside of Photoshop. Let's uh, drag it out a bit so it's bigger. And now I go to the material that I have here on the surface, and you can see that the material is a blend with metal and dirt, um, same as the last example. And I got my blended box map here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this front view here, and I'm going to drag it into the front slot of the blended box map. So what this is going to do now is this is going to take this bitmap, it's going to project it from the front, and it's going to project it based on the size of this bounding box, which is on the surface. And then uh, the dirt, again, the white is going to reveal the dirt, and the black is going to reveal the metal. And that's how we're going to apply the specific detailed dirt onto the surface of our object. And here you can see the result. So this is the, uh, um, the metal head, and you can see that it is projecting the dirt onto the front and you can see those drips coming out of these specific spots and the drips coming out of the face. And then I also went ahead and I painted uh, another map from the side and you can see that one here. And drop that into the blended box map as well, adding specific details to this side. And a blended cube projection uh, is something you can do as well as a blended box map. So you could do a blended box map in order to uh, get sort of general dirt on the surface and then only paint the details you want using a blended cube projection. So like last time, I also have some scripts uh, to uh, help you deal with blended cube projections. And so you may remember this one here. And I also have a... This is the maker, which allows you to make uh, a blended cube projection. This is the uh, manager, which lets you manage them. And then this is uh, the camera map template renderer. So all um, these features inside of here and here, you can do inside of the blended box map uh, by setting it to six and then creating your, your cube um, that you're gonna project from. And then uh, the rendering down here is the same as this. But if you like using this interface, you can use this interface now with the new blended box map. So. Uh, you have the old methods that uh, existed before, um, and you have the new one here, and here you um, can create the map, and then over here you can render the cameras. Uh, and instead of using selected cameras or the camera map Gemini method, you'd again use Max's blended box map method, and then you put your path inside of here. So again, you don't have to use these two scripts, uh, but if you want to use the same interface you're used to, you can use these two scripts now with the new uh, blended box map uh, map in order to do your blended cube projections. And then this one uh, is the manager, and so this one allows you to, again, change multiple uh, maps. So if you have multiple blended cube projections set up in a single material, you can use this to uh, change a bunch of them at the same time, like change all their blend values or uh, have them do a, uh, a projection box and choose which box you're assigning to them. So if you have like three or four different of these and each one is pointed to a separate box and you want to unify all these boxes, you can do that by using this script right here. 
And then finally I want to point out one last feature inside here, and that is the lock to frame feature. And so what this does is let's say that you're animating your robot and it's moving all around. Um, one of the issues is that since the bounding box is what's projecting the surface, if you m animate all of these objects moving in different spots uh, in relation to where this bounding box is, then the projection is going to stay put even though the objects are moving and so you're going to see swimming happening on your surface. And so that's why there is the lock to frame feature. And what this does, this means that it will look at where, where the relationship between your objects and this um, uh, bounding box on frame zero, it'll do its projection. And then no matter where these animate to on later frames, it'll always project based off of this original uh, frame that you have this set up. So when I do this, uh, um, I always have my zero frame is sort of like the, this is the frame I'm projecting all my stuff on, and then I animate everything after that. So that is a really useful feature if you plan on using this technique for something that actually is going to be moving. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully this persuades you to use the new blended box map in 2017, because it's really, really useful and allows you to do both blended box maps and blended cube projection maps in the same interface. And uh, feel free to go to my website, neilblevins.com, in the CG Education section to uh, see more tutorials, uh, including um, a tutorial giving you a little bit more information about blended cube projections and the other techniques, uh, the older techniques to do them. Uh, and then please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to be notified next time I have a video to see. So thank you very much.